Nurses of Reddit. Despite being ranked the most trusted profession for 15 years in a row, what are the dirty secrets you'll never tell your patients? Alzheimer's patients never sleep and are sneaker than a 5 year old trying to get a look at Santa on Christmas Eve. My wife's a nurse. During the night shift, she talk about other nurses going and finding empty rooms and taking extended naps in shifts. It irked her. Since she has a solid work ethic, but she isn't the kind to speak up. I would much rather be doing the dressing changes and bathing my incapacitated, sweet patient next door than getting you coffee and your sixth ice cream of the morning, you non-compliant duck face. Things I've dreamed of telling people, most recent being yesterday. This is a recent one, that some days, for me it's when I'm sick, we can only call out two times in six months. I do not feel like taking care of you and I would rather sit at the nurse's station and not do nothing but I know that you need me, knowing that you need me is the only thing that brings me to your room to answer your call bell for the millionth time. Not a dirty secret but damn, you really should be aware that when you are a D to us, your doctor is aware. I have worked for doctors who would fire a patient from the clinic for being offensive to the nursing staff front desk staff. We recently had a patient arrested for making threats to our operators, threatened to come down and chop their heads off. For the last few years it is more important to make patients happy instead of using our skills and knowledge to help make you feel better. This is a dangerous, our job is to heal, not to heal. We have way more patients than just you. That means while you're pushing your call bell for the 100th time wanting something menial, we have other patients actively dying. We hate that we can't answer in a timely fashion, but we have to prioritize. I'll run to the patient that is coding before I'll take you your 10th pack of graham crackers. Also, we aren't being mean when we make you take part in your own health care. If you're a drug seeker we fill your IV with saline when you think it's morphine just to watch you be stupid and act like you're high dart when you really aren't. We are tired. We are overworked. We have constant changes and new rules. We are overwhelmed. Just be patient and be understanding. There's a whole lot more going on than you can ever see. Also dart end of life care. If you are actively dying usually there is an order for morphine and dative and that we use to calm your respirations and ease your pain. Almost every nurse I know has given it as often as possible to help you ease into death doubt this isn't especially a bad thing. Sister is a nurse who has had surgery for a torn rotator cuff three times, fusion on her cervical vertebrae, and more sprains and pulls on her lower back than I can count. She's in freakishly good shape but lifting, turning, and assisting obese patients is crippling her. Fat is shifty and unpredictable when a patient is in pain and or under the influence of pain meds. I was visiting when an obese friend was recovering from gallbladder surgery and watched as he swung one tree trunk sized leg over the side of the bed to stand up and the rest of his bulk followed like a mudslide. Sis ran over and caught him and rolled the whole sleepy beast back onto the bed. A bad fall could have really set back his recovery. I heard a bone crunching sound as her back bent under his weight. Her big secret is she has been ordered to get the lift, an awkward and bulky sling crane, for any patent over a certain BMI to avoid further injuries. Most of her patients complain that she's deliberately humiliating them by hauling out the crane each time they must be walked or the linens changed. But there is no safe way for most healthcare workers to habitually muscle around obese patients. TL. DR. The sling isn't there to shame obese patients. It's there to help healthcare workers avoid crippling injuries to staff and patients. We never believe how much alcohol you tell us you drink. Whatever amount you say, we double that and report to each other the suspected amount. I have strep throat but I'll get written up if I call in more than 3 days in a row. Sorry about your grandma and her suppressed immune system. From the husband of a nurse, they duck up, and if at all possible, if nothing bad happens. They hide it, and itty patients get the bare minimum. Won't get me written up care. Not a nurse but a security officer in a hospital. Sweet Jesus a nurse is perverted and freaky. I swear it's an act of God I don't bust a zipper from them talking about the six capades. I worked as a director of nursing and also as a nursing case manager. Patients are often looked at as nothing more than currency in the world of healthcare administration. 
Patients are regularly discharged from hospitals prematurely due to concerns of the cost of care. I'm a male veterinary nurse. The amount of punches I have nearly thrown due to being told why are you a nurse, you're a man, or why aren't you a vet, or you're just a nurse etc. But it's fine. Carry on and undermine me. I'll just be here with a red eating grin as I charge you extortionate amounts for drugs to treat your dog's stupid ailments that could easily have been prevented had you not fed it fried toast and sausages from the dinner table. If you're dying because I hurt so bad and tell me your pain level is at a 10, yet you're on your phone laughing at something on FB, yeah, I'm not too sympathetic, you'll get your pain meds, but it's gonna be a few extra minutes. And if I've got someone on the floor because their blood sugar dropped in the 30s, you're gonna wait a little longer, and don't even think about giving me a lecture on how to do my job. I am your nurse. I'm here to take care of your ass, not to kiss it. I am not your slave. I'm not your personal servant. I'm sure as hell not your maid. And don't tell me how your kid or your mom or your sister or best friend is a nurse and they do things different. I do my job the way I was trained to do it. I've got 35 to 40 residents on any given night. It's just me. I love my job and I love my residents. But damn it. Sometimes I wanna scream. That it's no longer patient orientated, but profit driven. I was in the hospital for 3 days of rotating nurses and all I can say is that you are at the mercy of that person. Everyone is very very different in terms of attitude and service. It's like Russian roulette. Not a nurse, but everyone in my social circle either is there so is. How often doctors make mistakes, they send for a medication, and the nurse gets it and realizes something is off the medication is completely not what the patient should be getting, and they have to contact the idiot doctor to get a correct script. Not really a dirty secret, but when you are naked in front of medical personnel, we don't care that you are naked, and literally 4 seconds after you are clothed or no longer in our presence. Whichever happens first, we've forgotten what you look like naked. You only remember what people look like naked because you've seen a small number of naked people. We see naked people all the time. And yeah whatever. That's a D. Those reboobs. Look. An anus. Stretch marks. Fat folds. Whatever. A lot of the time. I think the doctor taking care of you. Or another nurse or the PA is absolute it. They don't know what they're doing. They have bad outcomes, and they are too arrogant to work on fixing what needs to be fixed. Some of them are distracted because they are having affairs with multiple co-workers. Some of them are alcoholics or are abusing prescription medications while at work. But I can't say that to patients. In fact, a few years ago, the hospital instituted a new policy requiring nurses and other staff to say positive things about their patients other caregivers. So I will find something relatively honest and seemingly reassuring to say to patients. Which improves satisfaction scores and reimbursement. But it's just short of a lie about half the time. If you and your family are nice to me, I will go above and beyond to make sure that you're comfortable and I will do whatever extra I can to help you. However, if you're rude to me or your family becomes verbally abusive or aggressive, I will keep you alive and I won't do anything nice or extra for you. I'm not neglectful but I certainly won't want to go in your room any more than necessary. Also, sometimes I would love to just be honest with some family members who are aggressive and just be like listen, we are on the same team here, you want them to get better, I want them to get better too. I spent lots of money and 4 years of my life to even get licensed to do this. I want to take care of your loved one and make sure they go home with the best quality of life. Please stop fighting me and the rest of the medical team like we are on opposite sides of this issue. We all want the same thing damn IT. In many areas of the US, thanks to brutal cost cutting measures, chances are your nurses on some level are worried about hurting or having a patient injured neglected etc. For simple lack of time, they have to check orders, safely give medications, provide other treatments like wound care, admit and discharge patients, make sure tests and other exams get done, bathe feed ambulant patients, monitor and assess your condition, and communicate with you your family DRS CNAs, and all the other tasks to get done, then do endless charting on each and everything, for between 4 and 7, or hell more. If someone called off or your facility sucks, patients on a med surf floor, 
Lots of times they barely have a chance to pee, grab a snack, much less a meal, or an actual break. This S is over a 12 plus hour shift. Even with CNAs and other ancillary staff, there's just not enough time in the day. The CNAs are just as understaffed as the RNs. But they risk jetting written up because of patient itch that it took 15 minutes to get fresh ice water. We, and the MDs, are not legally obligated to disclose a med error, unless you ask. Your baby is not cute it looks like a skin rabbit. And no that's not such a great name it is either god awful or the 10th baby with that name this week. Some nurses make fun of small big DEs. I had an older gentleman who tried to pee in the bedside urinal. But the urine would just flow down onto the bed instead of the urinal because his D was too small to reach the mouth of the urinal colon. Not to paint every nurse with the same brush. Because I've met some absolutely fantastic nurses. But a good chunk are untrusting and hostile towards the lab. We're all here for patient care. The amount of disrespect I get at times is very demoralizing. Dear all fed up nurses in this thread, I'm sorry for crying and calling you guys at 2 in the morning to get the blood out of my nose. And I'm especially sorry to the new nurse that I puked blood on, 3 times. Also special thank you to the nurse that was passing by me getting my blood done and stopped to hold my hand through it. You guys are great. Hospitals are dangerous. Ask questions. Have someone with you that isn't afraid to ask questions if you won't ask them. Or can't. Ask them yourself. Everyday people die in hospitals due to errors. The equivalent of an airplane full of people die everyday in hospitals due to preventable errors. I am a nurse and I also have an ill spouse. I have seen both sides. The good and the bad. Hospital errors are the third leading cause of death in America. Male IQ nurse here. I'd say overall women are more vulgar than us guys. Openly talking about sex. Periods like it's a normal conversation. We laugh at patients, and other staff, all the time. From genitalia, overall body appearance and smell. ER staff have a bad reputation for sleeping around. Think of all the police and firefighters that come in. The ER staff is generally hated because we send flaws patients. Yes some stuff might be undone. Or do we know everything about the patient? They don't understand care we can't turn away patients. So when the ER is full and sick patients come and we start taking care of people in the hallways. If I have to fart, I go into the rooms of demented incontinent people to do it. They are farting up the room anyway so it's all good. Not a nurse, but I do work in a hospital. I've seen a nurse passing out photos she took during her own Achilles tendon surgery to her co-workers like they were Pokemon cards. Senior nurse. I don't really care anymore. I will help you as much as I can but if you don't want help then go home. I don't care enough to persuade you to accept treatment. Free up the bed for someone who wants to be helped. One day I am going to say look I don't care if you live or die. I get paid whatever. If you don't want help go away and let someone else have your bed I know when I say it I will get in so much trouble. You need to let your 87 year old grandma die. She 110 pounds and just went through a third round of chemo. Her quality of life is a 1. And until you sign a DNR, we're going to resuscitate her when she codes. Breaking about 10 ribs in the process. She can't legally make decisions because of her dementia. But she's ready to end the pain and die. Dying is the natural end. Straighten out her affairs. Say your goodbyes. And pull the plug. Patient falls are a huge issue in hospitals. Insurance the government doesn't reimburse hospitals for any injury or increased length of stay due to a fall. The hospital simply eats the cost. So, when you fall, we get in trouble. Lots of paperwork. Meeting with our manager. Hell, we can get written up or fired if it's a frequent occurrence. I work on a neurosurgery unit which has a high risk for falls because our patients have either had strokes brain surgery and are confused or impulsive, or had spinal surgery and are on high doses of narcotics. I've had three patients fall in my nursing career and all three times. My initial response wasn't. I hope they didn't get hurt. It was. Are you ducking killing me? A duck. Now I'm gonna get in trouble. My mother has been a nurse for 25 years and has always worked hard. It breaks my heart that she often doesn't take a break. 
even to eat, during her 12 hours shift because she doesn't have time. Her hospital is understaffed and overstressed and she is the floor manager, I am not sure if that is the correct title, and must help out the new nurses in addition to doing all her own work. She must also find a replacement if a nurse calls in sick. She does not get paid a higher salary for doing this extra work. It doesn't help that she struggles to keep up with the new charting systems. I know she is not technologically savvy and I worry for her. She often came home an hour after her shift ends because she had to finish stuff up. She does it off the clock but has been written up for being too slow with it. She is so exhausted mentally and physically all the time. I just wish as she grows older she could have a cushier job experience. The stories of incompetence, indifference, and neglect of both patients and the nursing staff that I hear just make me sad, and most is caused by administration decisions and budget cuts. The nurses are the ones who get ducked over the most. Be kind to them, comma. I work at a Nikki R. I'm not joking at all when I say the nurse to patient ratios are usually 118 up to 130 on very bad nights. I am literally the only person to care for all of these people their extensive families and field complaints and true medical emergencies. Especially because my techs are off in the back texting or hiding away, or get pulled to do constant observations of high risk patients. I have varying degrees of sick patients. But I find the ones that are most stable are the biggest complainers who threaten to leave the hospital. I tell them they're free to leave at any time. Also. I have had people who complain of 10 stroke 10 pain, walking around and talking on their phone and laughing. They follow me around. Pain medications cannot be given earlier just because you follow me around. I once had a sickle cell patient tell me that the patient I'm working on at the moment is already dead, so I better give her pain medications. I told her she better leave. The curtains between beds, I don't even know the definition of the words private room when it comes to a hospital are not good for privacy. Isolation patients are sometimes right next to another patient because we are so full. If I'm running around, a person needing a bedpan or water is the least of my concerns. I work trauma bay very frequently, and family members get in the way, to a point where they impede their loved ones care. There's probably tons more that I can't remember right now.